the president's trip to Dover Air Force Base to pay respects to Americans killed in Afghanistan. U.S. Democratic Congressman Tim Waltz of uh, Minnesota is a veteran. He's also on the Veterans Affairs Committee. And retired General Barry McCaffrey, of course, is MSNBC military analyst. General, I want to start with you. If the president accepts the request from General McChrystal, the field commander in Afghanistan, and gives him 40,000 more troops to start with, what kind of a mission will that be? How many years will we be in Afghanistan? And what are the expected casualties over that period of time? Well, you know, the president's got this huge dilemma he's facing. My gut instinct is uh, we're there for a decade. Uh, the coming three years will be very difficult. I'd be unsurprised to see $300 billion and 15,000 U.S. killed and wounded. This is tough work. The question the president and the Congress have to address, though, Chris, isn't 10,000 or 40,000 troops. It's what are our political and military objectives, and can he explain that to the American people and gain their support? Without the support, this is not a sustainable operation. Well, let's take a look. Uh, let's go to the congressman on that. Tim Waltz, wake of a proposition that the United States goes in there whole hog in a counterinsurgency program to defend the country of Afghanistan from an, a Taliban takeover, a full effort at uh, population uh, defense and at helping to rebuild the institutions of that country. Nation building. Is that yeah, a smart well, I, thing for us to be doing? Well, I, I think it's where we're at, Chris, and I think General uh, Cafferty's uh, assessment was very close. I, I think the problem here was is we didn't have that clear mission. I think it's also uh, incredibly important talking about uh, Secretary of State Clinton's visit to Pakistan. This is much more about Pakistan than it is about Afghanistan, of, of trying to make sure that the Taliban insurgency into, in, into Pakistan does not destabilize a nuclear power. So the fact of the matter is, I don't know if there's any real good solutions here. They're all going to be difficult. The, the good news is, is that the, the president's taking a thoughtful approach. He's listening to everyone across the spectrum and trying to come up with a with a plan that that has uh, the best chance of success and i think success needs to be defined as denying uh, a, a clear operating and a clear uh, a place for al-qaeda to be able to conduct their missions out of and, and that's going to be a difficult task as the general stated well, general. well i think the uh the public rhetoric in washington is entirely that it it implies we're going to go to 10 populated areas we're going right. to cede the rest of the country to the Taliban. We're going to embed in the population and protect them there. Um, it's going to be a stretch. Uh, the, again, the key is this is not an operational nation. The, it's a war between the Pashtuns, the Tajiks, the Hazaras, etc. Uh, Afghanistan versus Pakistan is ill-defined. Uh, as the congressman correctly points out, our vital national security interests are more likely to be in Pakistan and Saudi Arabia than Afghanistan. This is tough lifting politically for our p president. Well, especially the, given this, former CIA field officer Bob Baer, who's been on this program many times, and you know him, General, he wrote in Time magazine this week, the real question for the U.S. should not be about the morality, well, should not be about the morality of a drug dealer on the CIA's payroll, but whether it's a metaphor for the huge challenge we face in Afghanistan. Do we stand any chance at all of building a modern, peaceful nation with confederates like Ahmed Wali Karzai? He's the drug-dealing brother of the president over there, who's apparently on our payroll. Vietnam would suggest Yes, the answer is no. Congressman, this is beginning to look a lot like 65 yep. and 68. We've got Madam well, New, we got the brother New, we've got uh, ZM here, a weak leader, not a mystic uh, perhaps like ZM, but a weak leader who's apparently not popular. He's got a brother who's a drug dealer who's on our payroll. And we have the, in, the unwillingness apparently or the inability of that government to defend itself against the Taliban. That's going to be our job. Well, should American people, should we as a country, be the main defense force of the Afghanistan people? No, we can't be, and it has to be the, Nash, the Afghans doing it themselves. And the general's right. the uh, the toughest The toughest hurdle to overcome is the police force, and and I think we're making progress in that. But I can understand the American public, and I spent 24 years doing this. It shouldn't have taken eight years to train these guys up. Uh, we're, we're not close to getting them there yet. And I think that this uh, myth that was started and, and perpetrated for seven years that that Afghanistan would be a functioning multi party democracy and a and a, a first world economy was absolutely ludicrous. Ludicrous. And, and I think, as far as Karzai is concerned, I, I, I stressed all along we needed to go to a runoff. Uh, I think the legitimacy of the Karzai government is probably okay. always going to be in question. 
Well, let's but take I a look at what the president said today, Congressman and General, General McCaffrey. Let's listen to President Obama today after his visit to Dover Air Force Base to honor the war dead. Let's listen. It was a sobering reminder of the extraordinary sacrifices that our young men and women in uniform are engaging in every single day, uh, not only our troops, but their families as well. Uh, and so uh, Michelle and I are constantly mindful of those sacrifices. And uh, obviously, you know, the burden that both our troops and our families bear uh, in any wartime situation is going to bear on uh, how I see these conflicts. Uh, you know, and, you know, it is something that I think about each and every day. Okay, it was clear he was up all night. The president didn't get back to the White House on Marine One until about four from Dover. Let me ask you, uh, Congressman, if you had to choose between an all-out effort to defend the government of Pakistan against, or Afghanistan, rather, against the Taliban, with 10,000 or 40,000 more troops, rather, now and maybe more later, or a decision to basically say that government's not defensible, it isn't our job to do it, We'll take our chances with an alternative plan. What would you do? Well, no one's presented the alternative plan at this point, Chris. And, and I don't think at the Karzai's level there, there's going to be that. But at the local level, I think there is. And I agree that General McChrystal is the best person for this job. But before we undertake this, I, I've been out and I want to know. I want to know how they're going to do this. I want to know how we're going to measure results. And I want to know before the president goes back and stands at Dover again, as it will happen, that what we're asking them to do is achievable and that it's in this nation's okay. best interest. That has to be articulated still. Within the military establishment, General McCaffrey, I understand that the experience of Tommy Franks when we first went into Iraq is very educational. Don't accept a mission without the resources to carry it out, or you'll be blamed in history. And I guess that's the question for General McChrystal. And here's the question to you, General. Is there a middle ground here? Or does the president have to basically take the advice of his general and give him the resources he's asked for, the 40,000 troops now, or else admit that he's not doing it? No, absolutely not. And it's entirely legitimate for the commander-in-chief to sort out the diplomatic, economic, covert intelligence, uh, allied uh, support, as well as the direct resource requirements uh, from his military commander in the field. Of course that's appropriate. My guess is they'll end up, the government, joining hands in some course of action then they'll feel they bought into it, and they'll go to the American people, the Congress, and try and gain support of it. You know, Congressman's a, re a retired Army Command Sergeant Major with time in combat. I think he called this entirely correctly. This process is important. It's got to be deliberate, because okay. once embarked, and it's 42,000 killed and wounded so far, this is going to okay. be tough work. It's murky for me. I need to have one quick answer for both of you. Is there a middle course between giving the, the general in the field the 40,000 troops he wants and saying no? Is there a middle course, or is that just muddling through like LBJ did? Congressman. No, I think there is, Chris, because I think it's different. I think we get a tighter mission on training the Afghan okay. security forces, and I think that's possible. Okay, General, is there a middle course here, or is that just BSing ourselves to offer a middle well, course? Well, there may, of course, there's a middle course because you can use uh, contractors, economic leverage, allies. However, there's an, a bit of me says we're arguing about 10 to 40,000 is nonsense. You know, you could give them 50,000 and it won't change the reality. What are the political and military okay. objectives, and can they get okay. the country to support it? I just remember the old rule, don't throw a 50-foot rope to a guy drowning 100 feet from shore. And I just wonder whether we have to be careful about that. Congressman mm -hmm. Tim Waltz, an Army veteran, of course, and General Barry McCaffrey.